All right, shalom, brothers. I'm your mind. Uh, praises to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. And double honors to the elders, Great Millstone. Uh, and basically, this lesson is um, called The Nine Tribes in the Half. You know, uh, their, their journey to the Americas. And uh, the tribes I'll be focusing on is the tribe of Reuben and the tribe of Gad. You know, because you got these new assholes out there saying that. Uh, Native Americans and Hispanics are not Israelites. You know, they got that new doctrine out there, which is madness, man. You know, so I'm going to go into it. I'm going to first show how um, the tribes got over to the Americas because it's recorded in the scriptures. All right, these niggas, they, they uh, skip over information like this because this information cuts them. All right, this is 2nd Ezra chapter uh, 13 verse 40 and it says those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Hosea the king whom Solomon Nazar the king of Assyria led away captive and he carried them over the waters and so came they into another land but they took this counsel among themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt now that's America, because during, this is around 720 B.C., you didn't have anyone dwelling in the land of America, you know? So that's a land that where never mankind dwelt. Uh, that they might dare keep their statues, which they never kept in their own land, and they entered into Euphrates by the narrow passages of the river, for the Most High then shoot signs for them and held still the flood till they were passed over. Because if you know anything about um, South Africa and, and going across th those waters, it's, it's perilous, man. That's why they created the Panama Canal Zone. So they wouldn't have to go over there. <coughs> you know? They wouldn't have to go over there. They'd just have to cross to the Atlantic, basically. Basically, the Panama Canal Zone uh, connects the Atlantic and Pacific Ocean. You know, so they wouldn't have to go all the way around Africa, which those are perilous waters. A lot of a lot of storms are there. That's what it means. The Most High held back the floods. All right, for through that country there was a great way to go, namely of a year and a half, and the same region is called Arsareth. Then dwelt they there until the latter time, and now when they shall begin to come. All right. So now, let's go into uh, this book called. Uh, the Ten Tribes of Israel right. by Timothy R. Jenkins. Right, let's go to page 80. And it says, it says, Our, South, uh, uh, <coughs> slacky, our Southern Indians have also a tradition among them which they firmly believe that of old time their ancestors lived beyond a great river that nine parts out of ten of their nation passed over the river but the remainder refused and stayed behind that they had a king when they lived far in the west who left two sons that one of them with a number of his people traveled the great way for many years Till they came to the Delaware River and settled there. Right, so they had traditions of that the America was in their homeland. It was the land beyond the Great River. Okay, because they crossed the ocean to get over there. And I'm going to bring up more information about how they crossed the ocean. Because you're going to find out that these uh, ten tri nine and a half, nine tribes basically, because the half was Levi, um... They they were expert in they were expert navigators. You know they they uh, made dugouts, which the, that's the word canoe means. You know, and they were expert in in seafaring basically. All right, this is called Africans and Native Americans: the language of race and the evolution of red black peoples, which are trying to say the natives are red. The natives are now red. They're brown. All right. The only reason they called them, the, the white man called them red was because most of the time they put on war paint all right some of the time it was red other times different colors but when it was red that's for war times and that's in the scriptures also 
that they made them made their faces like the faces of lions when they went out to war. All right, but this is by Jack D. Forbes, Forbes. All right, I'm gonna hit up like uh, three pages here. I'm gonna go to page nine. It says uh, the Americans of the Caribbean region were outstanding navigators and seamen as noted by the Spaniards and other Europeans. Christopher Columbus was impressed everywhere by their skill. He noted, for example, that their boats, which they call canoes, were excellently made from a single tree, were very large and long, carrying sometimes 40 or 45 men, two or more cadeaux in width. Uh, the American boats were unsinkable. So their boats were unsinkable, man, meaning that they, they knew how to build boats, they knew how to deal with water, you know, how to transport people, man. All right. And Andres Bernaldez recorded from Columbus that the Americans, meaning that uh, natives, navigated in their canoes with exceptional agility and speed, with 60 to 80 men in them, each with an oar, and they went by sea 150 leagues or more. They were masters of the sea. A canoe was later discovered in Jamaica, which was 96 feet long, 8 feet broad, made from a single tree. Columbus found that the Lucayo people of the Bahamas were not only very well acquainted from, with Cuba, one and a half days away via canoe, but also knew that from Cuba it was a 10 days journey to the mainland, doubtless Mexico or South America since Florida would have been closer than that. He also saw a boat which was 95 palms long in which 150 persons could be contained All right, and navigate. Others were seen which were of great workmanship and beauty being expertly carved. A canoe was also seen being navigated successfully by one man in high winds and rough sea. At Haiti, Columbus learned that the island, that that island or Jamaica was 10 days journey distant from the mainland and that the people there were clothed, thus regarding, thus referring to Mexico or Yucatan, most likely. All right, and uh, page 11, it says, even more significant for our purposes is the fact that when the Spaniards reached Yucatan in 1517, they saw 10 large canoes called Piraguas full of Indians from the town approaching us with oars and sails. The canoes were large ones made like hollow troughs, cleverly cut out from huge single logs and many of them would hold 40 Indians okay now Columbus because it was mentioned Columbus he he had a interest also in the book of Ezra if you watch that movie 1492 they tell you what he uh, the, the guy that plays Columbus I forget his name he says he mentioned to the priest he's like what about the book of Ezra because it mentions how the ten tribes crossed and it took them a year and a half to get to this land. So he was interested in that book. And I'm going to show you in, um, in this book called uh, Lost Tribes and Promised Lands by Ron Ronald Sanders. All right. I'm going to go to page 77. <coughs> it says, uh, page 77. Summer Columbus. All his life, Columbus's ideas about geography were permeated with a peculiar religious mysticism. He kept a book of prophecies in which he collected quotations from the Bible, often those dealing with isles far off. Down here it says, A striking element in Columbus's geographical rel religiosity is his intense and abiding interest in the fourth or second book of Ezra. The two apocryphal books of Ezra purport to be additional writings by and about the Old Testament Ezra. In the marginal notes to Columbus's copy of D. Ali, it's like, uh, is a relatively lengthy discourse of on Second Ezra six and forty-two, which reads, uh, "Upon the third day, thou didst command." that the water should be gathered up in the seventh part of the earth, six parts thou was dried up, and kept them to the intent that of these some being planted of God and tilled might serve thee. This was often to be cited by Columbus, who argued that since only one-seventh 
of the world was water a good deal more dry land than yet was known remained to be discovered overseas all right and also <clears throat> this this record right here this is called Christopher Columbus and the participation of the Jews in the Spanish and Portuguese discoveries by Meyer Karsling and Charles Gross and this is on page 15 <coughs> and it says um, he also the Psalm of Columbus he also very was he was also very fond of reading the Bible and the fourth book of Ezra which was probably written by a Jew who lived outside of Palestine according to his own assertion the incentive that impe impelled him the plan of discoveries was not a love of science but his interpretation of the prophecies of Isaiah in Portugal Columbus earnestly conceived the idea of making maritime discoveries by way of the West now how do you know to make discoveries by way of the West because he, he he had a, he had records man you know because he had he was a Jesuit man when you go into it you know he was a so-called Jew and basically he had re he had he had access to go in the Vatican which the Vatican had all, had all our records man they had the Moors records you know they had all that because they, they, they took all the records from the Library of Alexandria and, and put it in the uh, Vatican. That's why today in the Vatican, I remember reading an article like two years ago, they uh, uh, remodified the whole library in the Vatican and they put chips in the books. So now that they can, you know, it's impossible to take any of the books. You know what I mean? And, and those aren't even the books that are really hidden there's you know in the catacombs and all that there's hidden even more hidden books but uh, those books those normal books you know which you could probably find some stuff there why do they have guards there protecting it it's a library man you know what I mean you know but yeah they um, they uh, uh, put chips in them so they could track the book if you stole it basically you know so uh, that was the first part of the lesson you know just to show that the tribes got there and how, by what means they got there because they were expert in navigation and seafaring and now I'm going to focus on the tribe again and bring out information to show that they are uh, the, the, the Gad is the so-called North American Indians alright Shalom